Well, these were some of our last runs last fall. Boy, and I can tell because uh, look at those clouds. They look like they mean business. Yeah, and I've been somewhat concerned how everything's going to get through the, the winter. Right, because it's held off this year. Yeah, but uh, as it turns out, we've had one of the wettest winters on record. Oh, look at that. And uh, I was concerned because while the railroad's completely watertight with the roofing material and caulking and everything, water does pool on here and when we get this much rain it pools up to the point where it finds ways to just run over the edges and and get around the caulking and oh, everything can't have that it's completely up over the rails sure is and uh i thought you know it I, it could do some kind of damage because it's leaking down through between the caulking here I can't imagine running your train like this. Wouldn't it short things out? Well, that's what people told me, especially where we're using digital command control. They said just any moisture on here is going to short the digital command control out, and it's not going to work. And I have found that the best way to test a thing is just, well, test a thing. Oh, gee. <laughs> so I, I fired it up and brought a locomotive out. So it wasn't shocking at all. <laughs> And as it happens, it works just fine. Oh, well, good. As long as it has a snorkel. As long as it has a snorkel. It, it turns out that even with the digital command control and water completely up over the rails, I didn't have any trouble at all. Well, that's actually good. And I actually found it sort of fun running out here as long as it wasn't actually raining. Right, but I don't think we can keep running it this way. You're going to have to do something about this. No kidding. We need to come up with a drain. Oof. A drainage system. Because we can't prevent the rain from coming down and getting everything wet. And the other issue is we can't stop the snow from coming and freezing everything solid. Oh, and that is a problem. And that, well, that's actually part of garden railroading. You yeah. want to do this outdoors. Absolutely. But we we need to, well, I should say you need to come up with a drainage system. Because mm. I dumped this whole thing in your lap. How can we drain that amount of water off of the railroad? Well, I say we hit the nearest hardware store for inspiration. It's always fun just going through the, the bins anyway. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm probably one of the few females that gets a charge out of going to a hardware store, but I have my greatest uh, inspiration there. So I found this one-inch adapter, and I think this will work. Yeah, I agree. I'm it's going to take a small modification to it, but I think if we drill a one-inch hole down through there with a paddle bit and just shove that through the hole, that will keep the water from getting under the roofing material and, for that matter, uh, soaking the wood. Right. So what I did is, in the middle of a rainstorm, which there were plenty of, I went outside and found the deepest spots, and I thought about marking those with a pen, but you know you can't do that underwater. Not necessarily, no. So I took these screws, and I set two screws facing back to back at the deepest spots, so wherever I set two screws like this, that's where a drain would go. Right. And as it happens, there's about six places out here that are lowest spots, where we're going to need to install some sort of drain. Right, or look for the collection of trout. <laughs> <laughs> this looks sort of like thistle in 1983. Yeah, if you don't clean this up, this will be a mess. <laughs> we do have a rather flooded village, so a drain here, six different locations for drains, and I thought what I'd do is go ahead and drill the holes in and test the fit because if if this isn't going to work, we need to move on to some other idea. Oh, quickly. So I picked one location over here and using the paddle bit just went ahead and drilled a one inch hole. And of course, immediately the water started draining down through the one inch hole. Now the trick was, is this going to fit tight enough in there that we won't get leakage around it? And as it happens, yeah, it fits perfectly watertight down in there. This is going to work great. Yay! So I took a cutoff wheel on the Dremel and I notched the edges because we need to have the water run directly from the roofing material down through the opening and then just sort of tap these in place until they they fit watertight and that lip all the way around sits nicely right up against the roofing material making a nice watertight seal. 
So after thoroughly testing everything at this one location, I went ahead and drove it all the way in because I don't know that there's going to be getting these back out. No, where's your pile driver? What's <laughs> with the hammer? <laughs> Yeah, well, it was the handy tool. And remember, anything can be the right tool. And, and in this case, I'm actually using a hammer as a hammer. Right. But there it is, nice and watertight. And with the little notches, the water can drain uh, through the lip in spite of the fact that there's that lip that has to be there to make the watertight seal all the way around the roofing material. And then the water drains down through those notches and it works just fine. Well, that's great. So, success! Yay! Now we just need to install five more. Oh boy. My problem is they look a little strange on a railroad, like you don't see too many manholes. Yeah, you don't normally expect to see a gaping hole in the ground that drops off to infinity. Uh, no. So we need to come up with a little cover that goes over the top of these to make them look like what they actually are, a, a drainage grate right. of some kind. Right. And so we talked to Tori here, who does 3D printing, and uh, he said he would be happy to make us grates for all of our drains. Oh, cool. And won't that be great? Ye oh, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to getting out here and running again. I'm looking forward to things being green again. Right. Right now we come out here and it's just icicles and snow. And it's cold. It's cold. And who wants to run trains in icicles cold and miserable? No, nope, not right now. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe to the channel by clicking on the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet, and we hope you didn't find it boring. Or draining. Or draining. <laughs> and we will see you here on Sunday with some Sunday foolishness. We'll see you then. We'll see you.